eagles until I fell from the nest. I ran with the wolves, then got lost from the pack. Slowly, I go crazy every day. Some days run faster than others. I never strayed into heaven. It was hard getting past hell. I traveled through and beyond the death and birth of man. I am Ictomi. Normal that he would, um, I believe, call in the um, angels or um, the directions of the four winds. Um, he'd begin by talking. When that round ended, what do you recall happening? The second round. Um, oh, I would say 12 people came out of the sweat lodge. Um, James asked if anyone else wanted to come back in. Um, and when she first came out, did you observe anything about her? Um, she was upset. Um, she was crying, and she was upset and saying that she was disappointing James Ray and thought she should be back in there. And did you pay attention to her? Um, I was just aware of her, but then um, I became more aware and concerned because I saw two Dream Team people trying, I saw two Dream Team people pushing her with their hands on her back. I mean, they weren't pushing her, but they were trying to convince her to get go back into the sweat lodge. She was at the door. Um, actually, she was before the door, and they were saying, it's okay, you can do it. And she got to the door, and she said, no, I can't. And that's when they put her arm, hands on her and said, you can, you can, and, you know, got her to go down. Um, but then she still was saying no, no, and that's at that point I said she doesn't want to go in I said that to the dream team and and then they let her go back to the side but she was still very upset that she was disappointing James Ray at some point did you become aware of a man screaming yes and what do you remember him saying he was screaming he was gonna die and he didn't want to die and um, he was having a heart attack and things were getting dark and that kind of thing, but really screaming and really loud. Did you hear Mr. Ray say anything to that man? Yes, I did. What do you recall Mr. Ray saying? I recall him asking, who is that? What's that noise out there? And one of the dream team came over and said it was so-and-so and, and told James it's so-and-so. And, and um, James got real loud and um, directed him like, the same things, a year more than that, um, it's a good day to die. Um, they said, yeah, I can't get her to respond. And James said, she, I don't know if these are the exact words, but to the um, effect of, um, she's been down this road before, she'll be okay. Did you respond in any way? No. And did that concern you? Yes. At the time? Yes. And did you do anything? No. And why not? Um, James Ray is in charge of the lodge and his people in the lodge. Did you ever hear any conversations from within the sweat lodge about a person needing to use the bathroom? Yes. About when did you hear that? S second or third round. And tell the jury what you remember about that. I remember a fellow saying, um, James, I should have asked you this ahead of time, but what do we do if we have to go to the bathroom? And did Mr. Ray respond? Yes, he did. What do you recall him saying? Let it go where you're at. Did you hear anything more? No. I would, no. You I mean, can I elaborate? I was surprised because 
usually we take them somewhere to go to the bathroom. For other sweat lodge ceremonies? Yeah. Okay. Or even like a, a 2007, I walked somebody to the bath, you know, to go to the bathroom. But I don't, this time I heard him tell them to pee in the lodge. You testified so. about hearing Mr. Ray encourage people with expression, with phrases such as, you're more than that. How often did you hear Mr. Ray say that for this 2009 ceremony? Very often, um, more than in the previous sweat lot. I heard him say, so and so is not breathing or they're not responding. I can't get him to respond. After the lodge, I put my head inside and I could see three people. Did you observe Mr. Ray during that, those 15 minutes? He went and sat in the chair and stayed there. When you looked in, then tell the jury what you saw. I saw three people in the back of the sweat lodge laying there. Everyone I saw was helping someone else. Um, so, and I looked over and I saw James Ray and I said, there's three people in there. I need to get them out. Can I, op I said, I can't get in there. I'm going to open the back. When you told Mr. Ray you were going to open up the back, what did he, did he respond to you? Yes, he did. And what did he say? He said, um, no, unless it's absolutely necessary. And I said, I can't get in there. And so I went around to the back. So I had to move the rocks out of the way and attempt to pull the tarp and the blankets up. And I couldn't do it myself, so I started, I called for help. And what did you say when you called for help? I was screaming, help. And did somebody come to help you? My daughter was with me. And that's Sarah? And then what did you and Sarah do? We lifted up the back of the tarps. And what did you see? We saw two people laying there. And what did you do? They were... Their lips were blue, their faces were white, and my daughter said, Mama, they're holding hands, and I said, I know we have to get them out of there. And then I called for help again, and somebody came over to the side and held up the tarps, and Sarah and I pulled them out. Imagine running out of imagine. Mistaking authority for power, weaving life's free spirit into patterns of control. I heard all that was said, until now I hear nothing at all. The edge between twilight and dark, the great lie lurks, prostitution of soul, anyone can do it or not. I went down some roads that stopped me dead in my tracks.